Here we go, Howell. The fight that everyone's waiting for. Lucas Lepre versus Batista. Yeah, oh, this is it. This is the absolute final in the black belt. Oh, oh really that sweet from easy. Batista. Wow. Man, so smooth. It's, so, it's not easy to do that to Lucas, but I'm telling you. Look how he moves so well. Oh, and this is a good passing position for Batista here as well. Really good. I mean, we know how good L Lucas's guard is, how good his sit-up guard, and how good his uh, half guard is. But if anything, this might be his his weaker side if he has one. But yeah, Batista passing this side could uh, could could work in his favor. No, for sure, he's definitely put Lucas in a little bit of a pressure right away. I think Lucas didn't expect that come at all. I think no one did. Um, but I'm married to. But this, he got the opportunity and took it with everything. He's putting that knee already on the floor, which is going to make a little difficulty for, for Lucas. You know, he's holding the hand around the butt. This is very important, especially when you have the underhook. Lucas has the right underhook, and that left hand hooking on the butt makes the whole uh, body of Batista stay glued to Lucas' body, and it's, you cannot detach from him. Because by intending to put the right hand underneath by Lucas, you intend to take him out of you, push him away from you. And then when you anchor that hand over there, makes everything hard. And then the pressure on the shoulder there, you can see it's really hard. Here we go. Exactly, you know, this is exactly what Lucas does to others. And um, uh, Batista managed to make the right call and capitalize on the position. Yeah, Straight incredible, away. really, to see Batista do this to Lucas Lepre in this final. Very unexpected. For the submission, leg over that. So Batista, he, um, but he fought yesterday in the, uh, in the open class. Got through to the, um, the finals by beating Igor Schneider, Leo Lara, and the absolute giant Antonio Nunes of GF team. Lucas got a penalty by grabbing side of the, the pants, which is gives. Uh, but Lucas left his run one. to the final, the absolute final yesterday. Absolutely incredible. He fought, he fought the uh, ultra heavyweight uh, Henan Marcel. He fought the ultra ultra heavyweight, 140 kilo or more, uh, Saif Edini Humin from GF Team, and then fought Kainan Duarte, the heavyweight. In the semi-final, beating all three. And don't take into consideration that on the final of his Lucas weight division, it was a war against Levi. And Batista saved the energy by not fight against Kainan. And this counts a lot on the on the marathon of the tournament, you know, like you know, plus the weight, you know, like they are both professional athletes, but it does make a difference when you waste so much energy through your, the journey. But that's what it takes is to be the absolute champion. Well, Lucas was also the lightest and smallest competitor in the absolute division. He was the only lightweight signed up. 24 competitors signed up. 14 of them were heavyweight or bigger. Gustavo Batista fought here in the heavyweight division this weekend, closing out with Atos teammate Kainan Duarte. But Lucas fought through to the lightweight finals, taking silver to Levi Jones-Leary. So I can imagine that there's no way Lucas wants to go home with double silver, no. right? No, for sure it's not. But his situation here is not really great. Uh, you see um, Batista, a kind of player that is very methodical, very slow paced, controlling. Everything that he does is control before move next. And this is, is, a, is, a, is a tough kind of game to fight against you know he's ahead five points he's on top lucas has one penalty you know he's with all the pressure he has advantage of the weight of the resting yeah and even if lucas gets the sweep and the pass here he'll still be down by that uh, one penalty exactly. right so, so it's he needs to start acting right now but mm -hmm. how can you act when you're being controlled that he cannot start something so basically yep. to be honest it, whatever Batista is doing now is exactly what Lucas usually does to other people on his weight division. I got to say that Batista's posture here, the way that he has the knee up into the torso, uh, it, it's just incredible posture here, really. Yeah, very you know, spread, 
controlling the key points that he needs to be controlled. You know, that left hand on the knee to keep, just in case if Lucas wants to come up, he's already going to bring him back in. No, you know? Lucas has actually got the belt through the legs into yes. his hand. He's not using the lapel, he's using the belt, which is just as good. Yeah, pretty much. So that's why Batista has a grip on the top leg of Lucas, because what Lucas wants is uncross the feet, sit up. But once you have uncross your feet, you need to put that right foot back in. Wet. That's where Batista is going to keep lifting, so he keeps the hip on the floor. And he will have the advantage to reset the movement, you know? But, uh, but if Lucas put his head underneath of Batista's legs, that's a big advantage that he can do. But I cannot see where is the right hand for Batista. I don't know if it's under the head or... No, it's over. It's, it's over. over the back, If he's yeah. in the belt, it's a nightmare. So that's a, a, a stalling penalty call against both here, or for inactivity, I yeah. should say, not stalling, but... Yeah, Lucas is going to try to get up now. Yeah, so actually that, that puts an advantage in Batista's favor as well, because two penalties against Lepre. So even more difficult for uh, Lepre to get back into this. So there we go, Seth. That's what Lucas had to do. Very good position. Now this is good. This is better work from Lepre here. He's in but a good grip. position to try and sweep. Batista control the grip again. That grip is very important to stop the sweep. Oh, you can see Batista was trying to hide his foot and not allow Lucas to, to swim to underneath. Grip. But Lucas needs to break that grip out of his leg to be able to do something. by Lucas stuck to the back good position he need to free the left knee oh he missed that knee bar ah oh, leg drag such a good amount of pressure but it is putting holding all the key points that Lucas need to move that, that that's kind of really well controlled you know There's the problem when you fight someone like that, they know what they're doing, that they, he won't ever commit if he doesn't have the control. And that can be really tiring for Lucas. He already see Lucas climbing, you know, he's climbing the mountain through, look, like, there we go. That's Lucas, need to make him move so he can get a little bit underneath the hips, underneath of him so he can make movements. Here we go, that's a possibility. Sweep to the left side. Another punch, oops. Maybe a little bit with that, but this Andre Galvão, very, very concentrated in, in a fight. El now Lucas in the close guard. Gustavo. With uh, one minute and 40 seconds to go. Not exactly the position that Lucas would like to be right now, but uh, he's about to try to change something right now. El Gustavo Bastista was, uh, he joined the Atos team in 2018 to go there and train with Andre Galvao and the many amazing athletes they have out of the, the academy in San Diego. Of course, Lucas Lepre, he has his, uh, his own alliance gym in the States also. But this is doing so well, like pushing that knee down, clearing, put the knee through, very solid. And you know what the thing like is, we, we've it's talked crazy. about the age difference as well, you know, the uh -huh. fact that Batista is so young, whereas Lucas is, is well into his 30s. And the fact that Batista is a full-time athlete, whereas Lucas has a family, he has an academy just to had run. Kid. Just had Exactly, so. It's different, it's a different priorities right now. It does make a difference, you know. But uh, Batista is doing an amazing game here. It's like, like climbing the mountain very slow, control by control. Don't let nothing from another penalty yeah, against Lepre for the grip now giving two points now oh, making man. things even worse just 30 That'll seconds be. remaining less than seven points for Batista that pressure is incredible very good like, and he gets the pass 
So much pressure. 10-0 for Gusta Gustavo Batista. Even looking for the mount now with just a few seconds left. What a result, an unexpected result, I would say, Brownlee, the match. way that this match went. I mean, I think everything started from the beginning, surprising sweep, it's straight away to a very good position, you know, but come on, give it up to Lucas, man, like this amazing fighter, you know, an example, a great role model for our sport, you know, what a warrior, left the, everything out there, you know, what to say about Batista, man, look, come on, a young gun that is amazing jiu-jitsu, very clever jiu-jitsu, very technical. Um, you can tell how much jiu-jitsu he knows by the way that he plays the, his body and control the key points of the other opponent. Really beautiful jiu-jitsu watch. This is a, is a jiu-jitsu that I play. I like to play that way, controlling the key points, not just keep jumping up and down. And uh, this shows that he has full control of his mechanics and the mechanics of the opponents. Amazing fighting. Well really observed. is. And I gotta say that I, I just think it was a little bit too much for Lucas Lefty with the the amazing and incredibly difficult run that he had in yesterday's absolute division. It was just a little bit too much to try and do that, yeah. then compete in the lightweight division. Just incredible achievement, though, for Gustavo Batista to become the absolute champion here in Lisbon, Portugal, in the 2019 Europeans. Beautiful display of technical jiu-jitsu, but man, Lepri looks wiped. He looks exhausted. Yeah, he gave it all.